So I'm Wind with Holistic Human Design. And so let's see here. Let's start off with understanding how human design can change your life. All right. So basically, it's all about what human design is, is, and what I like to do with holistic human design is it's all about taking you on a journey into furthering your own self discovery. And typical human design loves telling you what you are, and it loves to even try to sometimes fit you in a box. But sometimes uh, it's when you know you hear things about yourself, and it might resonate, it might not. And it's really about self discovery and hearing certain things about yourself and going on a journey within you, and then feeling confident in creating the space for you to empower what resonates and what doesn't with your truth. And so what I'm here to do for you is to help you to understand your human design because it's a lot simpler to use it as a map and a tool to help you awaken to yourself. And it's a lot of times, you know, I've heard human design, everyone's like, oh, it's just so over my head. There's just so much going on. I don't even know what this, this is. Um, you know, like you look at your chart and it's just a bunch of numbers and lines and colors. And you're like, what does this all mean? And I'm here to help you make super simple sense out of what this map can show you about yourself and how it can help you raise your consciousness and your physical life experience and take you on the journey to integrate body, mind, and spirit, because all it is is just a sequence of patterns that makes it really easy to understand once you break it down and then you're able to live the magic and synchronicities because you know how to tap into your body and you have a mental framework to fall back on. So what is human design? So essentially you are a spirit soul transforming and learning and evolving at a rapid pace being here on earth. I like to consider earth school as your spiritual PhD, right? Like your soul's evolution. So when you take on a body and you're born here, you're given an energetic architecture and an operating system. I like to call human design your energetic operating system because it is literally encodes your energetic DNA. And what is human design? Well, human design is an operating system that is a combination of astrology, the I Ching, the Hindu chakras, the Kabbalah tree of life, and quantum mechanics. And it provides you with a map of your own self discovery. So, where did human design come from? Well, super fun. Uh, this the origins of human design was originally um, established and actually was downloaded by this guy right here, um, Robert Allen Krakauer, or was the voice that gave it to him or downloaded him with the information, Ra Uruhu. Uh, in 1987, it had a, he had a mystical experience where a voice literally came and downloaded him and talked to, and spoke with him in his mind and in his consciousness and told him to write down for eight days and nights the human design system. And this was in January of 1987. And uh, it was, he didn't write his first book until 1991 or his first book about the human design system didn't come out until 1991. And then when it came out, it was just the bare bones and the mechanics, just like basically the simplest, most, what the voice told him was just what it was. He, the voice didn't tell him what to do with it. So it was essentially, Ra was downloaded with this information and then humans and us co-creative generative humans of all the different types started creating a more specific language and it evolved over time. And then now we have this huge, immense body of knowledge, so much knowledge, so much language to describe the human design system and, and what they discovered and the patterns and the, and the internal architecture and the um, external architecture and how you energetically inter interact with everyone else on, in, on the planet. Um, now, I like to think that we have so much knowledge and wisdom 
oh, the not the we have so much knowledge that now the wisdom is all about applying it and applying human design into our everyday life and really fully embodying it. And because it's it's like a little life hack. It, it allows you to give your mind and your ego or um, some mental mind food to have something to anchor into and creates a construct and a mental framework for you to then navigate your life easily in alignment with your soul and your higher self and your higher purpose. So it's, it's literally like a little life hack. And also at Holistic Human Design, I love incorporating um, the work of Dr. David R. Hawkins and the themes of consciousness, because this is also a mental map and a mental construct that helps you as an evolving soul figure out where you're at on the theme of consciousness. And it gives you tools to pivot into the different levels of vibration because we're here to spiritualize matter, right? Um, our part, our purpose is to evolve our soul's journey by transcending and moving through all these levels of consciousness. As a human, we're able to experience all these different themes and all these different emotions and all these different thought forms. But when we're evolving and we want to just be up here in the higher themes and, and, um, you know, courage, neutrality, willingness, acceptance, all the way up into love and unconditional love and freedom and, and true enlightenment, because we're humans, we will still have triggers that will drop us down into these lower themes. And it's how to navigate out of these lower themes, accepting them, being where we're at, but then also acknowledging the fact that um, we're not designed to get stuck here. And granted, the majority of the human population is playing around with these lower themes of shame through pride. And it's how do we get up into these higher themes where all the magic and synchronicities happen. So I love incorporating that. And I, interestingly enough, um, Dr. David R. Hawkins and Ra Uruhu passed away and crossed over to the other side, roughly within a year to 18 months of each other. So, um, and then right around 2018, 2019, uh, human design and then the themes of consciousness started getting evolved into um, other people started to take their work and take their body of work and then transform it into new methods and new ways. So that's another just one fun way of showing how um, I like to say how the chakra system and, you know, when you're born, when you when you're a soul and you're born into the human body, it takes seven years for your chakras to evolve into um, into like your seven. Well, it's I have a theory uh, that within after you die, there's seven years on earth where I think there's like a little bit of an unraveling and it takes seven years for the unraveling or the, the energetic structure to unravel. And then it allows for other humans to pick up the pieces and co-create and evolve from there. The information that was already established. So the beauty about human design is that it gives you a mental framework to connect with your body. Um, we have been conditioned to make decisions with our mind and, and think that the mind is the ultimate say all, but our mind is where it's just a processor. It's just a processor of information. And I, I have a background in yoga. So I love to incorporate yogic teachings into my human design teachings because it's, you can see it within the patterns. Um, so one part of uh, human design is that we are literally designed to lead with our heart. And so this center right here is the G center. It's the heart chakra. And we have this little thing um, in there. It's called the magnetic monopole, meaning one sided uh, pole, like a magnet. It's just one, it's just, you know, one positive or one negative. Um, and it just so magnet has two sides, positive and negative. Well, this is only just one side because it's drawing consciousness or it's drawing your internal, external experience towards you. And so you lead with your heart. And in yoga, we're designed or we're uh, meant to bow our mental heart, uh, head and ajna to our heart. And so that's why we have, you know, all these yoga poses where we're bending our head over um, bowing our head to our heart, showing the, that the heart is the one that leads us forward. And it's also shown in human design. 
because this center up here, uh, which is the, the crown chakra and then the Ajna third eye chakra, that's where your design, per, design crystal bundle and personality crystal bundle of where your planets were activated within your human design birth chart. So these, those two aspects of yourself ultimately bow down and surrender to the, and become the passenger consciousness, which then you navigate through your heart chakra and your physical body. And so one of the main things about, uh, since there's, there's so much in human design, there's so much, there's so many layers, so many levels, um, you have, you have strategy, authority, centers, channels, gates, um, lines, arrows, and all of these systems interweave with each other. And so one of the main things that you start off with is strategy and authority. And it's a lingo, it's a lingo for people to just basically understand their overall aura it's almost like your sun sign in astrology, like, oh, I'm an Aries with a moon rising, you know, um, or a moon sign of in Capricorn. So um, it's, it's just like an overall way to start to navigate. And it's one of the most simplest things to understand. So your strategy, and also when you get your human design chart, you can see it'll show you what your strategy is and what your authority is. So your strategy is how you best navigate your life and your synchronicity and it's oh it's how you start to default or it gives your mind a default something to default to so that you know oh hey is this in alignment with my strategy instead of just overriding having your mind override your thoughts um or having your mind override your intuition you can just be like oh hey this is what i'm designed to do and so you can uh, prevent a lot of burnout or a lot of mental overthinking, or um, you can strategize your life. So it's like, oh, hey, this is in alignment with universal flow because it helps you get in the line with universal flow. And what is authority? So authority is specific to your body, um, like your own specific. So there's five different types of strategies and it goes along with different or types, which I will cover in this workshop. Um, but then you also have authority, which is your own specific way of how you best make decisions and trusting your inner knowing. So there's uh, seven with regards to that. There's um, sacral, splenic, ego heart, um, ego will heart. And then the G center, uh, environment and outer authority and lunar authority, which is specific only to reflectors. So once again, once you know your authority and how you best make decisions, you start to understand how these, how to trust your intuition, how to trust what your body innately knows, how to trust. And it gives your mind an an anchor point so you don't doubt yourself, which I absolutely love because if, if anybody of us have an active mind, <laughs> we, know how, we know how it can go in all different directions. So first and foremost, I'm gonna cover is the manifester. Now, manifestors are here to inform and communicate with others your plans and actions. So because you have a motor to the throat, you are literally here to communicate and um, like speak your truth, start things going because your aura is, you have a, a full contained system that you might, if, pe if you don't communicate with certain people, people might start to think um, suspicious thoughts about you. I've seen this happen multiple times. The minute a manifester stops communicating or stops informing people what's going on with them, I start to see other people start to have negative perceptions of the manifestor. So it's like a really great way of, you know, of a default to be like, hey, I probably, you know, I care about people, you know, these, they're my friend or my colleague or my partner. I just need to explain or communicate certain things about um, what I'm doing. 
And now the beauty of this, I've actually had a couple of people who are manifestors. They're like, well, that sounds like I'm, I'm, you know, informing mom or like, I'm, I have to go tell mom what I'm doing. And I'm like, <laughs> I understand. I understand what that, I get, get it. I see what you're saying. Um, you're uh, like, I don't want to, why do I feel like I have to tell somebody? And it's like, well, um, you don't have to do these things. Like you don't have to follow these strategies, but if you want to have a smoother ride and um, you want to uh, show that you care about other people, it's just like a little thing that, you know, so you don't ruff, ruffle people's feathers, right? Um, and then one thing that I love to talk about is um, how to know that you're uh, out of emotional clue that you're out of alignment because all the five types have emotional clue that they're out of alignment. So if you're feeling angry, you're getting angry and you're upset and you're mad, you know, one of the questions that I love asking is what are you not getting? And then how can you channel your anger constructively? Because essentially, you know, you're in alignment when you're in a state of peace and you are empowering at your highest vibe and you are provoking at your lowest vibe. And so what I love to just teach my manifestors is that, you know, just recognize that, yes, you are a, a, a one man band and you, I know you love doing everything on your own, but other people really want to help you. And, you know, if you just recognize that other people are here to help you and support you and just recognizing that you are here to inspire others, then it's just one way for you to fill in the blanks and, and gives people an opportunity for them to step into their design and their highest truth. So it's just having a little bit of courtesy because you're here to initiate and start the project. So inspiring and motivating. Generators, generators, you are actually here to respond to the external stimuli that comes and del is delivered to you. Um, so it's like you're literally the magnet that draws the universe towards you. And um, so, it, you know, I've, I've seen so many generators that are like, I want to go out there and I want to initiate, and I want to start things. However, you can do that only when you're given a clue, whether it's a person or a thing or something that you hear, you literally will hear it in your external world. So I always like to say to my generators, you know, play the scavenger hunt with the universe and see are your thoughts being manifested externally out in the external world like you're overhearing a song or you hear someone speaking that uh you know reflects back to you what's going on in your internal world into your internal consciousness and so how you know that you are out of alignment or in alignment with your design is that you'll have an emotional clue and your emotional clue is frustration um and the fun part about this is that um, other types will experience, like I've actually experienced generator frustration due to transits and things, even though I'm a projector. Um, but you'll have frustration to be like, okay, this is not working. And so it's more likely, um, the question I love asking is, have you received the external clues to respond or are you trying to make something happen that's not ready yet? So having ultimate, patience, you know, patience is a virtue, um, will lead you ultimately to satisfaction when you are given the right opportunity to um, allow the universe the time and the space to create the external world to draw it into you. Um, and it's all about, uh, you know, responding to the external circumstances and building resilience to be patient and not have to have things instant gratification right away. Um, because trusting that it'll all happen at the right time in the right place, because then you'll be more rhythmic to co-create and amplify and bring other people's visions to life. So just be aware if you're complaining, if you catch yourself complaining, then you'll know that you're complaining and frustrated that you're out of alignment and to get into alignment is just having patience and trusting that the universe will deliver what to you, what you want to create. For the manifesting generator, you are a combination of both the manifester and the generator. Um, you are still here to wait to respond because of your external, because of your defined sacral chakra. I know it can be easily tempting to default to, you know, tapping into your manifesting urges. 
And that will happen when you are given the external uh, stimuli or something externally in your world to be like, yes, this is where I want to go. This is, this is confirming to me and I'm, it's giving me an opportunity to respond to my external world because then I know that it's needed and people want it. And so that's how you can get um, a, real, a real dynamic uh, because you'll have the endurance of, of a generator. You'll have the endurance of a generator um, to keep that momentum going. And your overall, it's like you, you really invite people into your auric field and you're welcoming and um, you really can share people like, yes, you need to get in with this. You need to do this. Like this will change your life and people will naturally gravitate towards you. And to do that, just remember, like I was telling, um, in the, in the generator, the pure generator is that, um, you know, if you're trying to make things happen when it's not the right time, you can easily get frustrated or anger. But the trick is, is that if you find that way, just find a way to move into something that brings you joy and happiness, find something that you know, gets you to forget about whatever you're getting stuck and frustrated on, and then go find some pleasure, go find some joy and get into that higher vibratory state, let it all go. And then that's the open window for the universe to attract to you what it is that you're wanting to create and at the right time at the right place, which will ultimately lead to your own satisfaction. And, you know, so just being aware of like being stubborn and you're like, no, it has to happen this way right now. And sometimes it's just when we're moving with the universal flow and synchronicities, it's always at the right time and the place and it's always shifting. Reflectors, only 1% of the population are reflectors. And so you are literally here to go with the flow of life. You're literally here to go with the flow and to make the big decisions, the life assessments in time because you're here to wait a full 28 day cycle reflectors. Um, you are here to show the world what needs shifting or what needs or how to bring people into highest potentials. You're literally here to evaluate and direct others. And when you're making life assessments in time, it's more along the lines of like the big life decisions, moving jobs, you know, marriage, that whole thing. Um, uh, but when you're and the emotional clue for you is disappointment, because I love to ask my reflectors, what were you expecting? And what were you expecting the other person? Because you're so sensitive to your environment and the people in it, that when you are out of alignment, in your environment like what's going on in your environment how do you feel um you know cleaning your your energetic space or like is it the people usually a shift of in in the environment or the people in it will naturally create some space for you internally because then you won't be so dissipating in your energy and you'll be able to trust that when you change up your external world your your internal world will naturally shift because you are super sensitive to sampling and reflecting the energy of the environment and everyone in you. Because then once you're in flow and you notice just, you just fall back into um, moving into different environments or changing up people or having a lot of alone time. I know a lot of reflectors that love their alone time just so they can have clarity with inside themselves. Then that they just allow for the surprises to manifest in their life. And our projectors, our projectors are here to oversee and guide all the other energy types. Nothing, no sacral energy, but can easily tap in and see what other people are able to, how they're able to bring into their highest potentials, very much like a reflector. Um, some projectors love to um, show other people, um, what their highest potentials are much like a reflector but there so for a projector your strategy is to wait for the invitation or offer invitations without expectations and the clue for you that you're out of alignment is bitterness or and or resentment because are you also with the wrong crowd are you recognizing yourself and others 
um, because as a projector and being able to see all the little nuances within people, you know, offering your insights and opinions when they're not invited uh, can be seen as very interfering and kind of intrusive, which then other people will be like, I wasn't, I didn't ask for your opinion. And then you'll be like, then you don't feel seen and recognized, which can cause bitterness and resentment. So really it's for you is having faith that when you're with the right crowd and you're with the right people, that um, you will be seen and recognized and uh, just recognizing yourself and then coming back into yourself and uh, sharing your gifts with others at the right time, at the right place and trusting in that and having faith in the universe that when you fall back on your strategy, this is what will naturally unfold for you. And so also with this, because I've had people say like, I don't know if I really want to do this. It's like, well, it's up to you. This is all an experiment. It's all because we live in a polar polarized universe and we have light and dark here on planet earth. It's like you are your ultimately your own authority on how you choose to consciously leverage your energetic operating system. It's entirely up to you. It's up to you where you want to go, where, how, what, what type of life experience you want to have and to be able to have these uh have these experiences and you know basically it's it's your your ultimate authority you have um you can take what resonates um there's so many nuances within the chart you are for example i've actually had a generator come to me and it's like you know i don't really resonate with being a generator but he had a super when i looked at his chart and i walked him through it he has a massive channel that is a, is a projected channel. And, um, and I'm just like, hey, I can see that you're consciously thinking that you're a projector, but let me see if I can walk you through the steps about what it's like living as a generator. And then he started to see what, how living life as a generator. He's like, oh yeah, no, okay, that matches. No, that matches. I'm like, yeah. So there's like little nuances for you to get you to understand about yourself. And then, um, you know, our mind and ego loves to overcomplicate stuff um, because it, it literally is just looking for a job and it wants to have a purpose. And it's literally here, our ego and our, our personality. And it, it gives us an interface to interact with the world, you know, out here as spiritual beings, having a human experience. And, um, and it really like, once we start surrendering to our heart chakra and our heart consciousness, um, the ego, our ego minds will just simply we become the master and the third person observer of our ego consciousness. And then our ego consciousness feels like it has a purpose and it has a divine mission, you know, to help us and to be our friend and companion with us in this human experience. Um, so the beauty of awakening to your human design is that you will have compassion for others. You'll be in, you'll have frameworks to be in flow in a 5D synchronicity. You'll know how to live uh, know and live your purpose and what you're here to offer to the world. You'd be internally guided and directed, and then also pivot from your triggers so that you can become the best version of yourself here on this planet. Because if we were all just the best healed versions of ourselves, every now moment, we we're able to change and shift consciousness in in the whole world, because it all starts within, right? Like the external world, what's externally manifested is our shadow. and we see that in the, in the external world. And if we can just honor our own shadows and recognize it for what it is, then we are able to ultimately see that um, we're able to change from the inside out. And then our shadows aren't running amok subconsciously affecting everybody. So we can just be our best versions. So I'm gonna leave you a little bit of time for, uh, yeah, for Q and A. <laughs> um, okay, great. No, oh, no time for questions. Okay. Oh, I'm, yep. Okay. <laughs> well, here you are. Um, uh, yes. So, okay, great. Okay. So, well, um, this is where you can find me. You can find me at holistichuman.design on the web. And uh, I'm on YouTube, on Instagram at holistichuman.design, uh, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. So if you have any questions, shoot me a DM. I respond to everybody. So definitely find me out there. 
Oh yes, for questions. So yeah, so if you have any questions, please, yes, find me on here. And you know, I I just I'm a projector, so I love talking to everybody. And it was super excited to present to you, Gita guys. Thank you so much. Love you all, and I look forward to seeing you out there on the interweb. Okay, aloha.